without congressional approval. Okay, so he needs to go to Congress to talk about it. But even if Congress says yes, it's still illegal unless the United, United Nations Security Council agrees to it. Okay? And we, the United States, we signed agreements years ago that we would abide by the United Nations. We're part of the Security Council. Okay, so if we attack, I just want to remind you, if we attack without the United Nations Security Council saying it's okay, that is illegal. But more important to you, as citizens of Newark, it is a waste of our money that we need right here to create jobs. Newark is in pain. Newark is in pain. And we need help. We need to create jobs right here at home. And if we create jobs, it would lower the murder rate. It would lower much, much of the crime that takes place here because people would have jobs. So the number one reason, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, why we should not attack Syria is actually a selfish reason. It's because it's not good for us. It is not good for you. It's not good for our communities. It's not good for our children. It is not good to teach our children that violence is how you solve problems. Syria! No war! With Syria! No war! With Syria! No war! With Syria! Sisters and brothers, Cameron Mike gave us a good, sharp rundown on material reasons why we should not allow the government of the United States to engage in another war of aggression against the people of Syria. I want to hit on some of the moral reasons. Because whether we were rich or poor, there are moral reasons why we should not allow the government of this country to engage in another war of aggression against poor people elsewhere in the world. Reiterate what our demands are today. No attack, no war, no more weapons, no more finance for either side. What's the moral reason? This ain't our business. This is not the business of the people of the United States. It may be the business of the business people of the United States who seek more profits, who want to control the resources of another part of the world, but it's not the business of the people of the United States. And it's important that we learn to make those distinctions between us and them. The government, the corporations that run the government and own the government in the interests of the people.